Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CCA League Sunday Night Triple Header. I am DRF, joined by Cygnus today, and we have a fantastic matchup on deck for you all. We have PSU Blue from Penn State University taking on the Comet Blasters out of UT Dallas. Cygnus, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to see some Collegiate Splatoon action play out here, uh, especially between these two divisions. Yeah, definitely very decorated. For my time uh, on Hofstra's team, I, I've definitely had my, my share of nightmares from these two. Yeah. Mic is live. There we go. I think now my mic's coming through. Well, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump right on into this one, Cygnus, uh, with Clam Blitz on yeah. Crab Lake Capital. One of my personal favorite map modes in this. Personally, one of my favorite map modes in this game. Game. Since Crowdlock is introduced, it's already been one of my favorite maps, and I personally feel feel Clan Blitz is my strongest mode and one of the more fun ones to watch as well. Certainly, uh, and I think especially with uh, Crowdlock has just quickly developed as a fan favorite. I know that there are major critics here, and I know Penn State is one of those biggest critics of Crableg. So we'll have to see how they fare here uh, with presumably one of their least favorite map modes. But they are off to a hot start. Penn State Blue in the blue with that color coordination here. They're gonna get that quick one power clan push in. I don't think they have the follow up. Jay actually gonna be sharking here on the side, but only has one clam. I think they're just gonna go ahead and shark this one out. And this will be a one and done push. Yeah, it's also interesting looking at the comps here. We're seeing PSU Blue running with the double Trizuka as opposed to to a double Splatana a comp coming from Comet Blasters. Kind of like, kind of looks like a throwback comp to Total Crab Meta, except with except with a, a ball pointing to the machine there. <laughs> Absolutely, and PSU yeah. up with another push now. Got one power clam in, plus five, plus six now. They're throwing it in, and with this wipeout, this should be an avalanche of clams on the way. And this scoreboard is going to tick down very quickly here as Crack is just going to shark this ledge. Surprise, poor old Jimmy there. Oh. And now going to move up, trying to find more, but no. Going to find two members of Comic Blasters instead to shut him down. And now, it looks like the Comic Blasters should be able to get a little bit of breathing room here. If they can just make sure that the rest of the team is backed up, yes, they are. So... 10 points remaining for Penn State is a fantastic position to be in at this stage. Yeah, definitely. Definitely an uphill battle here for Comic Blasters to climb up from. They need to control space, be patient with their specials, and just get in good positions to get a, a, a good push. A ten, a, just one power clam won't do it here. You need to get a, a large coordinated push in if you want to chip away at that lead. Oh, certainly. And it's going to take a couple of pushes, like you said. Like, it's, you know, it it's not going to happen all at one go. Um, yeah. And I, if they're just going to have to slowly, like, work their way towards this basket. You know, just find an opportunity. Get one power clam. Even if it's a one and done, you need to start shrinking this gap as we approach the halfway mark of this game. They will find crack in there. Now finding a numbers advantage. Uh, to possibly work with here as Penn State is all the way back up in their base, but this Trizuka's gonna find a beautiful double Ooh. here. It's Jay coming up big here. 2v2 situation now between these two teams. And I think that Zuka might have just slowed down all of Comet Blasters from making any sort of push here. That right there is why the Trizuka is so feared in the current meta of this game. Just bring it out, fire right away, and you can immediately get we get not just one splat, but even multiple and swing the whole game and deal bigger splash damage as we see the Comic Blaster getting the first push of the game here with this ink jazz supporting it. Oh yeah, hey, hey, there we go. They finally got that first push in, able to kind of get their feet wet here against Penn State. Now they know they can approach this basket. Now they're gonna 
be able to at least close this gap a little bit. It's only 10 points uh, that they really closed, given the penalty that was tacked on as well. But it's at least just a couple clams less that they're going to have to score if they want to search for the lead, as we now see somebody coming up on those top left greats. And no, that's going to be a wipeout yeah, once again nice. on the side of Comet Blasters. Very, uh, very unfortunate for Comet Blasters there. They are just very strong defense being held by PSU Blue. I really like the defensive use of that ink acting there. Definitely one of my favorite design specials in the game. So glad it's actually, so glad it got to the point where it's able to see good, solid competitive use now. <laughs> Certainly. I mean, it's definitely been uh, fun to see how the vacuum has kind of changed things. Uh, you know, now that people are actually realizing, hey, this is actually a pretty decent special. Like, it, it's literally a, a shield directly in front of you. And yeah, like, look, this this is like textbook definition on, on using this vacuum right now as PSU is going to score once again. They have so many clams in mid to work with, and they have enough now to secure this win if they can just throw in this power clamp plus two more on top of it. But the hammer oh, coming God. up big oh, two going down, a third as well. And now with Comet Blast, there's 20 clams in their pockets. It's good. This is going to be one last opportunity for them to try and take the lead and surprise Penn State in game one. But it's going to take a huge push here in overtime. They need to make this one count. They need to keep as many clans as they can, even while pushing in. With that overtime timer ticking down, you just need to keep as, uh, as much oh. as you can, not use them all at once. And that's, that's going to be three down. They need to move up now. Oh, Use one power clamp. But the second one. is going to get shut Two down. Power. They only have a couple people left. And it's going to be Steorin on that inkjet that has to back up. And that's the wipeout. He just got mobbed in mid there. Yeah. Oh, man. It, it was such a valiant effort there. I mean, Comet Plaster is, yeah. I think, definitely gave Penn State a little scare there at the end. As soon as I saw uh, the three down and they had all the special, they didn't use any of their specials really to get that three down. Uh, I think they used the, the, the one hammer, uh, but otherwise they were all set up for a huge push there. That one bomb, uh, that suction bomb on the side of Penn State really saved their butts. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes just one well-placed bomb is all it takes to end a, a push. Props to Kind of Blasters for their perseverance there. That they're there. They're facing almost impossible odds with their opponent down to ten very early on in the game, and they they were still able to put a little bit of fear in their opponent's hearts, even if they didn't ultimately come out on top. Oh, certainly. So, uh, kudos to the Comet Blasters. I mean, and, and that's the thing that I really, really like about this team. Uh, the Comet Blasters have always just been one of the most fascinating teams, in my opinion, in the CCA. They have such a rich history that goes all the way back to pre-season one, uh, when this team was started up with Nito and Secant uh, as kind of their two star yeah. players. Uh, and I mean, these two teams have history as well, dating back to season one and even before that, when uh, actually the Comet Blasters in the season one Div A third place match. <laughs> so we didn't even have division numbers. We had division A and division B. Um, but they played each other in that third place matchup. It was a best of seven and uh, Comet Blasters actually reversed swept their uh their way through that third place match to take it from penn state uh so one of the most iconic matches in history that just was never recorded because that was in splatoon 2 and i believe it was happening at a time that we just did not have anyone to stream it either so unfortunately that match is just lost to history but uh we knew basically from then on that these would be two teams that would continue to flourish and be just fun competitors here in the cca and here they are still yeah what a year and a half later competing in division one uh going head to head once again yes there's just nothing like seeing players as hardened as these veterans on the scene here and even then these teams have had tweaks throughout the last few few seasons but they're still going strong they're still division one teams for a reason and they're here to show us that as they're continuing this rivalry Oh, certainly. Uh, I, I'm sure that there is some sort of yeah. 
recorded stat out there somewhere. We might have to go ask uh, yeah. uh, Hoken and Krona and Snow. I, those are the ones that uh, yeah. probably keep the most track of this. Uh, just to see what, what the, the record is between these two teams in CCA history. <laughs> And here we are on Barnacle and Dime Splat Zones. Definitely seeing more of a backline presence in this game with that Explosher coming out from Vapor for PSU and Comet Blasters running uh, in the Comet, Comet Blasters running the good old Ballpoint Splatling. And also that uh, that Flingster Roller has sneaky good range. It does. And, uh, you know, I think people will always kind of underestimate it just a little bit as we do see the Comet Blasters being the first ones to get control of the zone here but it will not last long as Penn State very quick to pick off two members here get control of the zone and the lead and now starting to push their way up to really lock out these Comet Blaster players. Kraken gonna make a move now here and able to get two on one oh, bomb. Double what double a kill. play by the oh, all so div one that. member Kraken Bear. And that from the side comp blasters was eliminated by that and the and also so the, the ton of missiles weren't able to accomplish much on the zone either so that's two specials down down for comp blasters that they're having to regroup and rebuild as they as they try mm. to just take the zone away oh and that was a nice hammer there however it's gonna be a 2v2 now they're gonna have to really get rid of snow here in which they do but there's still two down and now this is gonna have to be one last ditch effort here to get control of this zone. The, it's Jimby that's gonna try to make a move here, but it's not gonna be in time as PSU will very quickly sweep their way through game number two. Quite a fast game as Flat Zones games can tend to be sometimes. That was just a, a very dominant performance from PSU Blue getting very aggressive, denying much, Tom Blasters getting much value out of their specials and just keeping pushed ahead so even one comp blasters were able to get something going they still had multiple players in their faces that they had to deal with before getting to the zone all the while that time was ticking down yeah certainly uh and it seemed like they had a couple of good plays there but I, it's just that this psu blue team is really really strong uh you know they're they're running back the almost same roster that they had last season but with notable key addition vapor uh as a freshman this season is really giving this psu blue team a major yeah. boost as they now have a dedicated backline with uh, as we've seen him on that uh c jet and explo so far and flounder heights is gonna be no exception to both of those weapons uh it's, it's a playground for for uh c jets and explos oh yeah absolutely flounder heights one of those maps you love it or you hate it Personally, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the love category. I love the way the verticality of the stage just, just just forces you to change how you interact. So many approaches that you have to be mindful of. You can't just always rush from the front. You have to watch the sides, watch the flanks. Mm. Keep an eye on everything. Absolutely. And well said there. Because uh, I'm right with you. I love Flounder Heights. It is such a fun map mode. There's The verticality is unlike any other map that we really have in the game right now. And I understand that while it can be fairly lockout heavy, particularly in zones, it's it's fun. And I think that there is still a lot of competitive viability to it. There are flank options that a lot of people are always asking for in other maps. So I don't know, I That's love Flounder Heights. I think it's great. Uh, and we need to see more of it. <laughs> Couldn't agree more on that. Well, as these teams continue to get readied up, uh, they're going to run out the timer here. So let's go ahead and jump on into game number three, Tower Control on Flounder Heights. PSU Blue leading 2-0 over the Comet Blasters. Cygnus, let's take a look at these comps. Yeah, we're seeing... Uh, seeing a blaster coming out from Comet Blasters first and foremost, definitely going to want to get that that big bubbler on the tower. And the Tenetex Flatter Shot is coming out from Jay on PSU Blue. Getting those triple link strikes is going to be very important. Certainly. And here we go. Going to go ahead and start. Uh, these teams are going to start to meet in mid here uh, and start to, to duke it out a little bit. No one's uh, going down quite yet. Finally, it's going to be Jimmy on that blaster. That will be the first blood uh, as 
no, gonna make an aggressive move forward. That's gonna be three down as this tower is on the move. Yeah, here we see Vapor You're holding the tower aggressively, rotating around that tower to avoid angle, and just raining fire on them down from above, using the tower in combination with that verticality we talked about on Flounder Heights, just pressuring them as it's even further exacerbated by that triple link strike, just pushing their lead even more. Absolutely. And now with three down though on the side of PSU, Vapor's the last one standing, but there is a jump coming in. It's going to be Snow that's going to try to support here on the front lines. And Vapor going to somehow survive this flank Ooh. from the side, uh, ultimately going to go down at last. Uh, but hey, that was a really good push though. <laughs> It definitely gained a lot of ground there, and uh, on tower control, the more ground you can gain early, the better, because then you can just focus on playing defense, force force the opponent to come to you with the tower. The more of a lead you have, the further they have to get before they can make a meaningful lead ahead of you, while you can just wait for them to come to you and then take them out at a choke point. Well said. Uh, you know, and now we do take a look at the Comic Blasters who do take a little bit of control of this tower, able to get their first points on the board, but fall just a little bit shy of breaking through that first checkpoint. Jimby going to get pushed all the way back, trying to contest with Snow, but Vapor's there to assist with that beautiful arch on the x Uh Now this tower going to get all the way to where they were, tacking on a few more points now. This is going to be a last stand for the Comet Blasters as they are running out of players and time to get back on this tower. Ooh. And unless there's a last ditch effort here, this might be it. Yes, it is. PSU Blue knocking out game three. Very aggressive game from PSU Blue. Just just gaining the tower, pushing it down, using the upper ground to just rain down on Comet Blasters. And just and Comet Blasters didn't have much time time where they were able to go four strong and, and, push, and, and push in, in together. A lot of that game they had one person down, two person down. They were they were too staggered throughout that game. Yeah, uh, it was you know very well played there. Uh, you know, and and yeah. the comet blasters actually, you know, I one thing that I really like about the comet blasters is that they are a very resilient group. Um, and and I was starting to talk about this before I went into the whole spiel about the matchup history between PSU <laughs> and the comet blasters, uh, but. The Comic Blasters are just a, a really fantastic bunch. I mean, it's one of the most rootable teams out there. Uh, as they're just very scrappy group. Uh, they they are, are always giving teams a good run for their money. Uh, they have haven't had quite the breakthrough that we have anticipated out of them since season one. Um, but they're always right in there in the mix. And especially going into this season, now that Nito and Seekin have both graduated out of UT Dallas, this is kind of a bit of a new look for them because a lot of these players that are on their current roster are coming up from their second and third teams. Uh, you know, yeah. the, we're talking like the Neo Comet Blasters and I think last season they had like the, uh, I, I, I forget. They they had all the rebrands last <laughs> season. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that they switched back to Comet Blasters for their A team because I do love yeah. this name so, so much. Uh, but, you know, it, it, they're doing a fantastic job, though, of just continuing to hold up the Comet Blasters brand. Uh, and, I you know, I think that the UT Dallas should continue to be very proud of them. I mean, they're here in Division 1 for a reason. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, I need team in Division 1. You're a very good team, just <laughs> against other top competition in, in the CCA scene. Certainly. Well, let's dive on into game four. This is match point for PSU Blue. This will be Rainmaker on Undertow Spillway. It looks like the pop goes in favor of the Comet Blasters. So they are going to just kind of try to hold on to mid here. Jimmy sticking their neck out just a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. They will get punished for it. And now second member going to go down, make it a third. Mm -hmm. And this is a bit of a stagger here, a big yeah, yeah. stagger actually. Yeah. Thankfully, Comet Blasters did have their tactic ruler up. So it's not as bad as it could have been, but that's still not a situation you want to see at the start. Very interesting though, seeing PSU Blue go for the 
going for the seldom used right checkpoint here on Mr. Toast Doughway. Usually you see T teams go up to the left into the more open area and push up from there. Oh, and take a look at this flank from Snow. Yeah. Snow and Kraken, a one-two punch in the bats on the plat here, trying to make it very, very difficult for the Comet Blast to even break out of their own spawn. Zuka coming out to save himself and take and take down the end zap along with him. Oh man, and now it looks like the uh, PSU will be uh, shifting over to the left side here. Uh, typically used for more sustained pushes. Uh, you're not going to get points as quickly, but it is a lot safer as they do lose control of this Rainmaker a little bit. But hey, Snow continuing to be on a tear here. Uh, as they're gonna go ahead and just back up into mid, give up this Rainmaker for now, try to hold paint as best as possible. Yeah, speaking of holding paint, that's what Comet Blusters need to be doing. They need to take space into mid, into mid, get a foothold, get a pick or two, and then have the Rainmaker go up to take a checkpoint to be able to contest, test, test the lead that PSG Blue has already built. Certainly. Uh, and now we do see do. Jay with this reef slider at the ready uh yeah. waiting for a perfect time to to use it and surprise the the other team and they're going to find an opportunity to use it now to pop Ooh. this rainmaker barrier that's going to be a delayed Ooh, wipe gosh. on the side of the comet blasters a huge push coming here from psu blue all the way down to 34 not going to be able to get yeah. it onto that slick uh walkway there uh yeah. a nice trade as well but this rainmaker is still on the that move Kraken going to push it another 10 points yeah also Speaking of that surprise reef slider, just a surprise pick in general with the silver arrow spray coming out. Not a pick you you see very much in competitive in competitive play on the ranked modes, but it's do definitely definitely doing a good job at its role here with that with that reef slider into the rainmaker grab. Yeah, and I mean it's Penn State. Penn State's like, always yeah. trying to come up with yeah. some goofy ideas. Uh, the arrow spray is certainly no exception. I mean, Kraken likes to, to pull that out himself from time to time, and I'm sure that this has been something that they they have certainly discussed and practiced plenty uh, for moments like this. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you're running something something very uncommon and unorthodox like that, you, you definitely know, know, know they're going to be good with it. They're practiced with it. And as we see here, that reef slider coming in again, getting work done. Just just Jay being, uh, being a menace here, harassing the team now with his busy bombs. Yeah, and Cooler now going to be coming out for the Comet Blasters. A minute 20 to play here as the Comet Blasters have yet to get possession of this Rainmaker beyond the midway mark of this map. They will have just a couple more opportunities to do so. A big hill to climb here to keep this set alive. But they've been doing a fantastic job of just trying to slow Penn State wherever possible. Now it's the opportunity for them to turn this defense into offense. And time just really not on their side here. So they're going to have to make a move rather soon with these three specials online. Yeah, getting effective use of these specials is going to be ha, how they need to turn the tide of the game. It's the, the cooler in the stamp coming out, letting them grab the Rainmaker, and looks like they're heading for the last checkpoint. Oh, and a sure. great dodge there of the Reef Slider, but no, it's oh. the x -Blow. That comes yeah. in with a clutch pick there, and that's going to be one per going down to Compost. Make it two, make it three, it's a bloodbath. Everybody going down now. 22 seconds to play. Penn State just needs to hold this Rainmaker in this position. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're not going to even pop this barrier here to give them, uh, to give the Comet Blasters, a, you know, even a sliver of hope. Uh, yeah, no need to go for the pop. You just want to keep them as far away from that Rainmaker shield as possible. And with that situation, it's in the, the perfect spot to do so. Oh, and the Reef Slider <laughs> with the cherry on top, finding two more to clean up this set as Penn State remains perfect through two weeks of play going 4-0 this week on top of their 4-0 run from last week. Just incredibly played there. Just just all the players from the timing of the reef sliders to that crucial pick Vapor made with that exposure to Kraken Man, to, to Kraken Mirror running in the enemy's faces, wreaking havoc, cause, causing them to focus on him. It's a good pick. Just so well done by, by PSU Blue throughout that whole set. And that game just encapsulated it. 
Certainly. Uh, well, but Penn State going to clean this one up for O um, in, in rather quick fashion here. So I guess now that the question becomes, uh, are these teams going to do the classic play all seven? It doesn't seem like it. I did. I do believe the Comet Blasters mentioned that they have, uh, a, or at least a couple players have a Ludi set after this. So they're yeah. going to go ahead and bow out, go practice with their their next team. Uh, complete respect for doing so. I mean, Ludi running alongside oh, the yeah. CCA this season. Yeah, doing both of those, uh, especially on the same night, it's got to be so hard, even just like from just from a mental standpoint. You put all, all this work in for your first match. You play it out, and even regardless of a uh, result, you put a, a lot of energy into that, and then you have to go and do it all over again for another set. Big, big respect to them being able to do both those at the same time. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. <laughs> absolutely i know and, and on top of that there's like the pro yeah. con splat league running at the same time so the, i I'm, a, I'm aware that there's a yeah. few players that are actually playing in all three at the same time so oh cca <laughs> ludi and proton splat league all together that is that is a crazy commitment for like the three of you out there that are doing that one what is wrong with you two i hope you're <laughs> okay and three, blink twice if you need help. Um, but on top of all that, I wish you all the best of luck in all three leagues. That is a huge uh, commitment and certainly no easy task. You are the troopers of the Splatoon community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just so much dedication to this game. You love to see it at any level, no matter what. Just keeping the grind going <laughs> <laughs> certainly well uh I, I mean these two teams are done i mean it is a bit ahead of schedule but hey that's what happens when you have a 4-0 um and, and especially with a couple of these games yeah. ending in knockouts uh so cutting the set even shorter than what we had anticipated um yeah but hey, that's what happens. Splatoon is a, a weird game. Sometimes things can go super fast. Sometimes we can get drawn out for ages. Um, so, so sometimes it's a bit of a blessing to be done a little bit early because that means that there was really no technical issues other than, you know, my capture card uh, possibly dying today. Um, so we'll we'll send out invitations for that when the services are for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. But Cygnus, I know this was uh, your first time joining us on the mic. Uh, I, I hope that you had a little ton of fun. Um, oh, definitely. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so we certainly will, uh, you know, love to have you back. I know, it's, like I said, the set was a little bit short. So maybe, maybe one of these days we'll get you on for uh, a set that'll run a tad longer. Um, but hey, I mean, <laughs> that's all the credit to PSU Blue. They they kicked some butt today and are continuing to do so. <laughs> Yeah, they definitely showed why they're rated as highly as they are. They're a darn good team, and and they just came out to play, didn't want to let anything up, and just trucked on along and, like you said, kicked butt. <laughs> Certainly. Well, Cygnus, uh, go ahead and take a second to plug yourself. Where can the people of our chat find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at CygnusX. 18. I'm not very active at all there, though. I'm mainly lurker, but I'm I'm in the CCA Discord. Always welcome to to chat. I'm hoping to be on here commentating a lot more and just just yeah, in general, I just enjoy being active in this competitive Splatoon scene. Awesome. Well, and as for myself, uh, I'm going to continue to be behind the production desk again. Extending an apology for everybody that has joined us today. Uh, my capture card just is trying its best to hang in there, apparently. Uh, but we're doing our best to continue to at least give you coverage of these games. So let me go ahead and plug myself because I will be stepping off the mic and back behind the production desk for this final set that is coming up. Uh, on Twitter, you can find me DRF underscore Splatoon and on Twitch, Triton DRF. But as usual, you can find me right here on the CCA channel covering all things Collegiate Splatoon. With that said, thank you all so much for joining us for uh, game number two of our Sunday night triple header. We have one more match that is coming up in about 20 minutes. So gonna be a bit of an extended break here. 
We hope that you will join us for that one. Should be a fun time. It's a Div 3 matchup, I believe, uh, between Griffink and I am forgetting who the other team is. Golden Barracudas. There we go. Um, so you do not want to miss that. That should be an absolute fun one. Uh, stay tuned. We will see you on the other end of this break. So long.